There's a few things that you can expect in today's video. Firstly, in our trip to the thrift, we found an item that went on to sell instantly on eBay. I'm gonna show you what we paid for it, what the item actually is, and how much we were able to go on to sell it for. We're gonna come back here to the office, and I'm gonna take you through 14 items that came through over a 24 hour period on eBay. Some great items that you can hopefully be looking for, or getting a bit of an idea of, for what to sell. And then we're gonna take you through a bit of an update on the cull. We're, we're stripping back all of our items that aren't worth a lot of money, out of our eBay store and geez, it feels good. I'm gonna give you an update on how that's looking and how many sales are actually generating based on those actions. So it's gonna be a long video, I've got a feeling today. Hopefully you're ready for it. Let's get into it. Well, half price shoes. I can't say I'm not disappointed about seeing all of this. Um, now these were an interesting one. I've never come across a pair of ice skates before, but we've got the Bauer. These are the S140 Supremes, and as you can see there, there were some really good international comps on this, and I've got no issues sending this off internationally. Um, so, look, it may even go domestically, but it was a men's size US 7.5, and, and, you know, considering I'm only able to purchase them here for $4, um, I feel like we can list these up for about $80 to $90, and based on the comps, we can probably get it. So that's going to be significant, and I think that's the sort of item that we want to try and be finding. Just because there's not that many domestic comps, I'm still reliant on what I see internationally, just because about 10% of our sales do go internationally as well. Um, so don't neglect those comps, is what I'm trying to say there. Um, these are a really good pair of shoes as well. We get some really good turnover with this one. What's crazy is they are only a dollar. Um, the, the 574s, New Balance, I'm gonna, because they're only a dollar, I'm gonna underprice this a little bit just to get the quick sale. I'm probably gonna go about $40 on those. And then these, I'm probably gonna go about $30. These are some Adidas Continental 80s, and they're only a dollar in store, so you can't say no to that. All right, we just found these. We've got it for $5. It's an m and I'm nuts about you tin. No date, oh yeah, 2006. And what were the comps on this one? 25. I just think it looks cool. And then we've got this as well. It's an m and dispenser. That one's $20. But they were going for about 65. And it looks like dispensers are pretty popular. There's these. Probably a no to these, eh? I think so. That one. And found one for 20. 20, yeah, we'll leave that because that's quite big. And then there was this one. This one's kind of cool. M&M. &M. Oh, yep. Yeah. So we'll leave that. What about the, what about the shoes? Do you know if they're genuine or not? Just an op shop, I cannot take the, yeah, the authenticity. Take the risk too, but look, they look quite nice. And when I look at the stitches and the oak they've been made, like they look quite nice. Oh, I might leave them. No yeah, but I'll take them back. Uh -huh. So there's a few things that I wanted to unpack there out of that clip. And the first one was obviously the Balenciaga shoes. Courtney and I spent about 10 to 15 minutes just cross-referencing a website that was telling us what to look out for, for both the real and the fake version. The thing that got me really interested with these shoes, and normally with the high-end brands, I would just simply walk away. Um, but on the bottom of the shoe there, there was a price tag for 6,800 Hong Kong dollars. And when you do the conversion into Australian dollars, it's what the retail price is for a brand new pair of legit Balenciagas, about 1300 Australian dollars. So that made me think they might be genuine. Um, but we had a bit of a further look and they were $50 in store. And like I said, I never buy high-end brands in op shops, uh, thrift stores. So I put them back on the shelf. I said to the guys, take them back. We won't deal with it. Maybe we've left a pair of $1,300 shoes we could have sold for five or $600 on the shelf. Uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you would have done. Let me know what your thoughts were on those Balenciagas, albeit it obviously was limited footage. Uh, and then the other one as well is you might have seen a very, very short snippet there of an iPod. The Balenciaga shoes was the focus, but I said, oh, I'll grab that iPod in there as well. And that was in the glass cabinet. And uh, I actually flipped it over and it was 160 gigabytes and it was a seventh generation iPod. Uh, it was all plugged in and working. 
Um, and I sold it for $115 within three hours of listing. So maybe I could have got about $150, $160. I'm not too sure. The comps were telling me it was worth around $130 to $140. But um, that one sold instantly. You know, we paid $20 in store for it and it went on to sell for $115 within three hours. This is always a great find. We've got this DVD, Lord of the Rings Trilogy box set. It's $12, sells for $60, and I have done this about four or five times in the past, so I'm pretty confident with this purchase. Courtney also had one that she thought might have been a good buy as well. Mm. The only thing I'm thinking with this is it's probably too big for shipping. Yeah, and there is one for a 25. A lot of others at 25. Yeah. Yeah, so now. I think we just take this, eh? This was definitely a find that plays outside of what we normally look for when we're thrifting. Courtney actually spied this just as we were leaving and it looked to be worth quite a little bit of money. So we had a bit further a look into it and thought we might grab it. It's the same, is it? Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. Have the divider. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the what do you reckon? Plus 28. And came in today. Came, came in today and it left today. How good. That's a good buy, that. Isn't it? I just put it out here. Yeah, the, th Did you? the thermos is worth 30 or 40 bucks, I reckon. Oh, I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's got a vintage feel about it, too, I yeah. think. New day. Salvo store. So it was a pretty decent day yesterday. We were able to get some pretty decent items, but we're back out today to try and round out a few more. And I've jumped into the footy boot section. There was a massive tub of football boots. These were selling for $60, as you just saw. But with the $20 price tag in store, I just thought I'd leave them behind. Um, you know, you're probably only making 10 to $15 in profit with that sort of a deal. Um, best offers, coupons, things like that. It always brings the price down ever so slightly. These were a great pair of Nike Tiempos though, the Legends. Um, they weren't the Legend Elites, which sell for $150 plus, but they were the Legend Sixes, so they should sell for about 80. Um, the Secret, 20 bucks. Look, it's a short, sharp, cheap winner. I'm buying this one based on sell-through rate. Um, this should sell pretty quickly. It's a pretty damn popular book. Um, the Gel Nimbus 23s here as well. I ended up passing on those, but based on the comps that I was seeing when I got home to make this video, $18 worth of a purchase price probably wasn't too bad. It's just that we've got so many shoes that we're still trying to cull. Um, that's the reason why I've ended up leaving both of them uh, behind, but um, the shoes are a great category. All right, guys, we've just found this one here. It's the Vince Flynn, the collection, brand new and sealed. It's got a $14 price tag on it. Courtney is just going to jump into uh, the e-profit calculator, and we're going to have a look at this because I think based on the comps that we should be able to get $49.99 um, and then $14, and with the shipping, is going to be about, mm, go $10. So that's $18. What I like about it is the fact that it's brand new. And it's a great author, Vince Flynn, great author, brand new. I think we should do it. Mm -hmm. Do you reckon? Yeah. Happy with it? Yeah. All right. We also found these guys. We've got this one here, which is Cars on the Xbox 360. Courtney, can you check that one for me? Just Cars. It's only a dollar, but if it doesn't really sell that well, then I won't bother. Got this as well, brand new with tags. They're $4 each. I don't know why I said tags, because there's no tags on it, but they are sealed DVDs. Fraggle Rock. Complete Season 1 and Complete Season 2, both brand new sealed. We might be able to do these as a bit of a deal as well. $8 in. I'll get Courtney to search that up and see what that's worth as well. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, Courtney. Oh. And the, and the game's there. Is it scratched? Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. No, no. Oh, no. no. That sucks. Because uh, that is a 40 to $50 game on the Xbox. Dude. <sighs> What's that word? Scratched. Scratched? No good. Um, can you, on this, search up Fraggle Rock? Damn, I'm going to have to put that back. It's such a shame. I'm going to leave it here and someone will think they've got a deal. 
Fraggle, Fraggle Rock. What is it, one and two? Yeah, one and two. So, looks like season one goes for about 10 bucks. So I think we, this would be sort of a 20, 20 to $25 play. $4. Four dollars each. Yeah. So eight, eight into 25, brand new. Oh, she's ruthless. <laughs> She's ruthless. It's gonna be a satchel. See, it will be a small satchel. And you know what? I'm in I'm in a complete agreement with you, Courtney. Yeah. So we're gonna do the Vince Flynn out of all of this. Yeah. We're getting very, very ruthless, which I, I kinda like. There's some more DVDs over here though. Not great. Not great. I've pulled out some absolute crackers in here in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um Give me two minutes, guys. We'll try and work some magic here for you. But, I don't know. Courtney's just... That's a, new one. that's a brand new. Courtney's just found a little bit of a steal here. They are five, but it's called the Three Stooges. Mm. And we've got a volume three and a volume four. And what's the price? Yeah, there's one volume four for 20. The one to four collector's edition. I think this is the collector's edition, yeah. 60 for one to four. Okay. So what that means is... I mean, they're five dollars each, though, aren't they? I don't know. That one is impossible. I think they're a dollar a disc, which is absolutely horrific. Yeah. But if we can find four, it'd be twenty into sixty, maybe. The Three Stooges. If we can't find it, we're just going to leave it for just a good bolo DVD for you guys to try and find, and we're going to leave it because I'm all about trying to find complete sets. The Three Stooges. Nah, I'm not seeing it. No. Not seeing the Three Stooges. Yes, yes. But that's a bowl for you guys to try and find. Christmas, Don't you dare, Courtney. Always does that. She always tells me she's found the box set of Prisoner because <laughs> it sells for 500 bucks. Let's get out of here. So day two has been quite difficult, uh, guys. We've done, how many stores have we done for you? Probably like six. Ooh. Yeah, I think we would have gone to six stores and our ruthless uh, way of thrifting now has caused us to only be able to tick off the list of yes, we should purchase this for three items. Yeah. Three items, you know. It's, it almost makes me think we should stop thrifting and just focus on private buys, flea markets, maybe a Facebook marketplace for deliberate pickups. Because um, these thrift stores are not oh, producing God. anything. They are producing some bad drivers. But yeah, we've got uh, yeah, we've got three items. That's why I'm challenging ourselves to try and really sift through uh, the next store to try and find five items. Easy. Well, based on what we've seen so far today, difficult. But we'll it's all it. about your mindset. You reckon? Oh, I reckon I can get this green light. Whoa! Oh, please! You <laughs> made that sound. These guys are probably thinking I'm just a bad driver. That was not scary. Yeah, what else do you want to say, Courtney? I'm hungry. What, can you show them what book that you bought? I brought The Power of Now. Apparently it's really good. The Power it's of Now? spiritual, which is not usually me, but You're I'm a spiritual sure, person. Not really, but... The Power of Now. Comment below if you've read it. Yeah, let us know. know. Yeah, there you go. When are you going to start reading that? Tonight. Yeah. No, go. I'm still reading my diary of CEO. Oh yeah, Steve Bartlett, CEO. Courtney's work dan has been doing really well. Yeah. A lot of good sleep data. 90% sleep recovery last night. Better than usual. Yep. Yeah, 90%. That's exactly what you'd want to get. Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to go into this next store. We'll see you in there. Just found these, Courtney. <laughs> but they're not going to do it. $15, but there's just not enough comps on, uh, not enough comps on eBay for this um, Echelon 8. 
It's a women's nine and a half. They're in good condition. They're fifteen dollars. I don't know. I think it's just not quite hitting the mark. Yeah. We'll leave them. Wow. It's like a lightsaber. Virtual reality. Virtual reality Jedi challenges. That's cool. 16. No, thank you. Now, this was a good find. We've got Dog Whisperer. We've got season one and two here. It is a rare title. There's not a lot of comps on eBay for it, but I think we can flip this into around about $30, and they're only a dollar each here in store. So two into 30. I think that's some pretty good numbers. Uh, and then I've also got some books as well. So it was a, a little collection here at the end out of this last thrift store that brought us up to 13 items. So books, DVDs, they're sort of categories that turn over pretty well for us as well as video games, shoes and clothes. Um, the books here, this was Kate Forsyth and it's not an author that I've ever come across before but for a dollar each, I thought I'd go ahead with this. If it's in its complete entirety, it's $65 but I think we can turn this into 30. We're off to Taco Bell for lunch and I'll see you back at home. What do we get? <laughs> Always a very good option, Taco Bell. I would love to know in the comments actually, what is your little guilty pleasure? What's your food of choice after a big thrift trip? Drop it into the comments below and we might do it for the next thrift trip that we go on. Um, we're back home. I just want to give you an update that every single listing or every single purchase that we made in that thrift haul has now been listed. Obviously the iPod Nano already going on to sell for a pretty decent price, but I'm pretty confident that even though it was a relatively slow couple of days sourcing, um, you know, only 13 items for what was almost 13 thrift stores, uh, I'm actually quite happy in the sense that we're only buying the good stuff. We're, we're letting a lot of stuff go. And that's in large part actually thanks to Courtney. Um, as you might have seen in one or two of those clips there, she was really quite vigilant in saying, no, don't get it. It's not a 10 out of 10 item. And that's really all we're out there looking for. We're, we're going to continue to rely on those private picks uh, and we're going to continue to rely on the flea market because you're just finding better quality out there and uh, you're not wasting as much time like you are when you're going out into the thrift stores. So uh, all of those listings up, ready for sale. Uh, if you do want any of them, obviously just hit me up on Instagram. We can always give you a better price. Um, but what I also wanted to do in this video is I wanted to take you through the December goal, uh, the numbers on the whiteboard uh, that we've got for the month of December and um, just sort of where we're tracking, which is now Friday, the 8th of December. Um, already a week into this month, so time is absolutely flying. We'll be in 2024 before we know it. Uh, and then I also want to take you through 14 sales that we need to put into the mailbag before the weekend, including one big one actually that's um, coming through next Thursday. They've agreed to purchase it, but they can't make payment until next Thursday and it's a $300 sale. So hold out for that one. All right, so here's a quick look at the numbers. We are tackling $10,000 for the month of December. I'm putting it at 10,000, even though we did 14,000 last month, uh, because I believe that probably here, December 17, uh, there's gonna be a significant drop off in sales for these two weeks right here. Obviously Christmas plays its part here on December 5th, uh, 25. Um, so the post will pretty much wrap up there for deliveries in time for Christmas. Um, so that for that reason, I think our sales need to be made, our 10 grand needs to be made in these couple of weeks here. Um, so yeah, 10,000 is the goal, but fortunately we're already sitting on 3,279. We're averaging 468 a day. As you'll see, there was a $700 day there, another 700 there, and then we had a 600. So kind of every second day, we're getting some pretty big sales numbers come through. And as you'll see, we haven't even been listing for a couple of days for the very first time I've been saying no to listing because we're doing this big culling process and I'm gonna take you guys through that now. So there you go, no real listing goals, no real sourcing goals, yet we're doing $468 a day, all thanks to the cull. And I am actually gonna take you upstairs as well and I'm gonna show you the amount, the, the absolute crazy amount of work that Courtney's been doing over the last two days up in that third bedroom. If you're unfamiliar with what we're talking about, a couple of days ago, uh, I decided for the start of December, we would, following off the, the Black Friday sale, we would just start to cull all of our loose ends, all of the low ticket, low valued items that we've got in store. I'm talking $10 DVDs, $10 video games, um, just shoes that have been sitting around for three or four years uh, in inventory that really, we've. this is all our own fault. We've just neglected to do this task and you really should be doing it every six months. 
Um, so we're doing a catch up of about three years worth of a cleanse. So there's a lot of work to be done. Not only is it pulling out those cheap items, but it's also then going through what remains and we're actually deleting, or not deleting, but we're changing the price points to be lower um, for all of the other inventory that we're actually keeping in store. And there's a couple of sales right here that refers to that exact um, method of change. We've had a few sales come through and I'm going to kick it off actually with some small... I'm going to do this, this what's sold, there's 14 sales. I'm going to do this based on, on the way we're going to ship it off. Uh, and the first ones are going to be small satchels. So let me just jump into the computer here and I'm going to pull up the sales results for each item to make life a whole lot easier on camera. Um, okay, so the first one that we've got here is McLeod's Daughters. Now, this one sold... Uh, this one sold for $18.95. As you can see there, it's three DVDs and we always put anything over two DVDs into a small satchel. So that's why that's going into that. We'll put some bubble wrap around it, $18.95. Uh, it's obviously gonna cost us $8.50 to ship off. So it's basically a $10 sale. Um, it's sort of borderline one that you would almost kind of want to try and find a few more seasons to put into a bundle or just simply get rid of it. Um, but fortunately, $18.95, we've been able to hold on to it and make a quick sale there. Um, this one here, though, is a result of the dropping of the price. Courtney went ahead and dropped this set of three of Carl Pilkington. Um, I would say we've had this one for over a year, and we ended up getting a $18.95, the same price as this. So two sets of three, both of them going for $18.95, small satchel. I think we would have had this listed up for $25 or $30. We dropped it down to uh, $19.95, and then a 5% uh, off coupon was activated as well, which brought it down to $18.95. So that's another small. And then this one was a beauty. Courtney really did pull the price down on this one, but within 24 hours of dropping the price, she got the sale. Uh, and I actually shot her a message after she finished work um, yesterday. And I said, guess what came through? One of the ones that she literally just changed. And she said, she, she replied to me, she's like, yeah, you can expect a whole lot more of those sales to come through. And she's right. Um, so this one was initially priced up for eighty dollars. Um, packed to the rafters on DVD. It is the complete series one to six. We went pretty hard on the listing value at eighty bucks, and then Courtney jumped into the shelf and she priced it at fifty nine ninety five. A five percent off coupon was utilised. This is actually going into a medium satchel because it's six. I should say that. Um, so it does go into a medium, but it sold for fifty six ninety five with the coupon activated. So you know you're looking at ten dollars worth of postage for a medium satchel. So we've got a forty six ninety five sale price, and we would have only paid two dollars at most. I'd have to go back and have a look, uh, but say twelve into forty six dollars. I think that's a, still a pretty good turnaround, considering it was on the shelf for you know six to nine months. I'd much rather see that conversion in a shorter frame of time. So that was awesome. And then one other one, I picked this one up. This was um, a Santa Cruz singlet, brand new with tags. I actually got three of these off a mate of mine. Um, there it is there with the tags down the bottom there. Uh, it's just a size medium. It's a very standard item. It's not something that I would go sourcing. It's not something I would advise you guys to try and pick up. Um, but a friend of mine that knows exactly what I get up to with this business had a bunch of clothes in his house that he didn't want anymore and he gave it to me for free. I priced it up onto eBay for uh, for twenty dollars. It was actually sixty dollars for three items, uh, and I've sold now all three of these for twenty dollars each. So you know it's a twelve dollars sale price once it goes into a small satchel, uh, but twelve dollars that's going to be a net of about eight to nine dollars in true profit, uh, and I've done that three times now. So I made about thirty bucks off him just simply donating uh, those items to me instead of the op shop. So that's a really big lesson in there, guys. I'm always a big fan of telling people what you do. Um, because if you tell people what you do, you get good options like that where you know you can sell some stuff potentially for free if you're getting it off them for free. But um, if not, you can pay them cheap, a cheap amount of money, a small amount of money, uh, and that'll work as well. Envelope time. Let's have a look at the envelopes. Um, some good sales came through. I did just sell a um, an Alien versus Predator Extinction PS2 game, and then the buyer said to me, the buyer goes. Uh, I'm, I'm able to pay for this late next week or the week after. Um, just so you know, I'm not after this for Christmas time. I was like, what do you mean? Like, this, this is not a lay-by center. And I actually said that to him in a message. I'm like, this isn't a lay-by center. It's a store. If you want to buy something, you need to have the money to pay for it. I, I don't even like waiting around three to four days per eBay's terms. I think they've got up to five days before they can make payment. And I don't even like waiting that long. I, I, I send, uh, and I think this is something you guys should do as well, I send um, 
payment reminder messages within three hours. I send them a message and I'm like, hey, are you going to pay for this? You know, that generic message that you're able to send off. Um, and then I do it every 12 hours until I hear from them. Because a lot of the time you send this message off and it's auto-generated so they never bother to reply to it. Um, and I actually get a lot more sales or a lot more money paid into my account quicker um, by just being a little bit forceful with that send payment reminder message. Um, so I definitely recommend that you guys do that. Um, geez, it is hot in here. Um, all right, so we've just had another sale come through, which I'll have to go and find. Um, but I did sell Sonic Colors on the Nintendo DS. That will go into a tracked medium envelope. Uh, Sonic Colors, um, complete with uh, complete with manual there. So video games continually being a great category. Again, a five percent off, off coupon utilized. Twenty three seventy five. Death in Paradise. This one survived the cull only just. A single copy season four DVD. We got a nine dollar forty nine cent uh, sale price on that one. We'll be putting that one into an envelope um, that isn't tracked, and we're going to put a couple of stamps on it. Um, this one here, I'm so sad to see that this is the last one of a bundle of about seven or eight of these that I found at a Big W store buyout. I got all of these brand new DVDs for like four dollars each. This one here, American Horror Story season eight, brand new sealed. Uh, I've been selling these like crazy for around the $20 price point. Uh, and this one here sold for a little less than that. This one sold for $16, but it was the last one. Um, so very sad to see that so, uh, go. It's been a great multiple unit quantity sale uh, that's kept ticking over for me over the journey. SpongeBob SquarePants, uh, we've sold that one off for $15. Don't need to say too much about that. Tora Tora Tora, that one was a cheap one as well. Uh, we got $9 for that. So that'll get the untracked treatment. Uh, no worries, um, this one's obviously come through. We've got Grand Theft Auto Vice City on the PC. Um, obviously, with Grand Theft Auto 6 just being released um, for a release next year in 2025. Um, this one here has come through for a 20... I think it was 25. It was... No, 32. 32.55. That was awesome. Uh, a repeat buyer as well uh, purchased that. So thank you very much to whoever that is. Um, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Uh, Grand Theft Auto games would no doubt be selling for a lot of you guys out there, I'm sure. Uh, Forza Motorsport 3. This is the one that comes with the console from back in the day. Um, it does have a Halo game as well, Otzt, on the back of it as well. Um, that was cheap. That one's not worth a lot. That one went for... Uh, what did that go for? Yeah, $9.45. So again, just surviving the cull. We haven't got into the video games yet for the cull. Uh, Command and Conquer though, that one there, another PC game with Grand Theft Auto, that one sold for $25. So I've probably been neglecting those a little bit actually. Um, I think I've definitely been neglecting the PC games. I should pay a bit more attention to those when I'm out and about. I'm just always worried about the key code, the passcode that you need for a lot of those computer games. And I just fear that when they get it, they're not going to be able to play it. That's the only reason why I've, I've gone away from it. It's a lack of knowledge, I think, more than anything. Um, we also sold Monarchy, the Royal Family. That was a that was a price drop as well. Monarchy, the Royal Family. We had that up for $25. We dropped it to $19.95 and then a coupon was activated. They bought it for $18.95. So I would say over two days of doing this, just in this postal run alone, uh, we're looking at three to four sales that have come from doing what we're doing this week that would have continued to sit on the shelf if we didn't do the cull. So... That's great. Um, now, three other sales. There are three other sales I want to take you through. The first one here is a pair of shoes, a really good pair of shoes. Um, it's a pair of Solomons. Now, I talk about these quite a bit on the channel whenever I come across them. You may have remembered I picked these up in a recent thrift trip, uh, sorry, flea market trip. Um, I paid, I, I believe from memory, it was about $20 that I paid for these. And we got a $70. I think it was 70 bucks that came through on them. Uh, yes, 75 We got $75 for the Solomon XA Pro 3D Gore-Tex Mountain Trail Hiking. That's a good title. Uh, running shoes, men's US size 12 as well. Um, that always helps too when you play between a size 10 to 12. Uh, so that was a great sale for $75. And then this one as well was another flea market, another flea market purchase around the same time that I bought those Solomons. Um, it was the Warriors book series. So... This Warriors book series, one to six, there it is there. Now, this is the book series of The Power of Three. What I will say is Warriors, Aaron Hunter, 
if you find those books out there, I've got a bunch more actually that I'm trying to sell because we bought them all off this lady for a dollar a piece. I think I paid $15 in total and I've got a ton more books up there. But this series set of six sold for $33 on a very, very generous acceptance of a best offer. I will say that. I gave her a very good price. I just said yes. I just thought, you know, it's better to have the money in your pocket. Uh, so 35 35 was the uh, was the sale price in the end. And that will go into a box. I'm going to put that into a box as well. Could it go to Bunnings? Could go to Bunnings and get some more boxes. Um, I had that listed up for 45 so I gave her a $10 off, which is a pretty, I don't know, that's pretty decent. That's a pretty generous offer, I would have thought. Now, the big one, the one that I wanted to take you through that is um, actually been purchased by Jesse. You guys might have remembered Jesse came and actually twice now, he's done two private picks with me. I went to the Sunshine Coast first time around, and then he came here about maybe three or four weeks ago um, and uh, sold off the rest of his collection. Well, he shot me a message, and he said he wanted a bunch of Pokemon cards that were in my store. And he's gone ahead and he's bought some big, big bundles. And it was worth about $440. That's an allocation. That's a sort of a mini partial set of cards from a certain year. Um, then there were two other partial sets of cards here as well. There were some Japanese cards. And then there was some, I think, Neo Genesis. I don't know. Anyway, he bought a bun bunch of different bundles. And then he bought a bunch of these um, shadowless Pokemon cards from the base set. So you've got Bulbasaur. You'll see there they are shadowless as well. Um, so he went through and he said, I want all of those. Now, he goes, there's $440 worth of value. What will you do for me? And I said $300 just because he's been a very, very good connection for me over the last couple of years. Um, so he's paying for that next Thursday and I'm going to ship it off for him uh, next Thursday. So that was a fantastic sale. And it was able to, it allowed me to tear out 25 listings from my store. Um, so 25 listings no longer uh, sitting in the store, which plays into the culling that we're trying to do as well. So, you know, while it didn't sell on eBay, it was still able to be pulled off eBay, which is, to be honest, right now for me, equally as exciting. Um, so that is what is going out into the post. I've got to do that today. But I do, to finish off this video, what I want to do, what I want to do is I want to take you upstairs and I want to show you, while there has been some culling going on down here in the garage, what we're trying to do is we're trying to cull the third bedroom and then whatever's left in the third bedroom, we're trying to bring down into this garage and have this garage as the only location for inventory. I think we can turn over $150,000 in revenue next year and have it all housed in a single car garage. I think that's possible and we're going to make it happen next year in 2024, Courtney and I. Um, so I'm going, to sh I'm going to take you up to the third bedroom right now and I'm going to show you where things are at. All right, so as you can see here, we've got a number of tubs building up and this is all tubs that have got low ticketed valued items that Courtney and I have been able to look out and say we're not going to list this in our store anymore. So all of that is gone and what remains is all of this and all of this. So there's a lot more holes starting to pop up here. And then we've got a few more that are tucked away in this chest of drawers as well. So that kind of full with DVDs as well. And the bottom ones there are full as well. So I would say it's my guesstimate that this would be worth about 40% of this entire room. There's just some books up in here. So I've just got to bring those books and all of those books downstairs as well. But... What Courtney's now doing, now that we've pulled out everything from up here that we no longer want, which is all of this, Courtney's been working through all of these and she's been significantly dropping the price on a lot of these listings because they are still old listings that we don't want anymore. And as you can see there, she's got to work through all of that next week. So it's a big, big job, but I'm very excited to see all of these. And what we're going to be doing with all of these is we're going to be taking them to the flea market. I'm going to try and sell them off for 50 cents a piece and then whatever doesn't sell, we'll probably end up donating them to the op shop, I would probably say. So the plan next week, well, first I'm going to go to the flea market, I think on Sunday, and I'm going to buy a few more items because we are sporadically listing up a couple of items here and there. And I do want to make the flea market a really large part of my sourcing. Um, but then there are more DVDs down here in the garage that we can be sourcing through just like we were upstairs. Um, and we also then need to get into every single other category. We have got hats. We need to go through all of these hats and drop the price, pull out the ones that are no good. 
We need to go through all of the shoes. That's going to take a week in itself to go through all of the shoes, I dare say. Uh, and then we've got all of these video games that no doubt, no doubt, there's some video games in there worth you know nine dollars fifty that we can probably just go ahead and donate, or maybe go out to the flea market and sell them off at the flea once we've built up a few more on top of the DVDs upstairs. So. This will be an exercise that Courtney and I are going to complete over the course of December. So we're not rushing the process. We're giving ourselves the next three weeks to try and get it all done. Uh, albeit try and still find a few items here and there and list them up. But what I will say that even though we've only listed for four out of seven days, you know, half of the days we're listing, half of the days we're not, we're still doing a better month in December in sales than we were in November, even with sporadic listings. And I think that's because algorithmically, if you are still tinkering with your store in the sense of deleting items, re, you know, reducing items, price points, um, you might be going in and tweaking titles to make titles better. You might want to take some more photos or better photos of the items that you've got in store. If you're doing all of that every single day on eBay, so you're still actually working, just because you're not listing doesn't mean you're not working on eBay. I think all of those other little advantages are helping the algorithm still push, uh, yeah, impressions for customers to see your items and ultimately buy your items um, so what I'm learning what I'm really yeah what I'm really excited about is that we can have a really well skewed out garage down here with say 1500 items and if we if we then continually buy the right items uh, we can turn over oh, that's a cool goal that could be a goal that I sell what I want to do for next stuff uh, sort of for next couple of weeks is I want to sit down with Courtney and I actually want to plan out what we're going to try and attack for, for 2024. Um, do a bit of a, a performance review with Courtney and then sort of what we're going to plan to attack for next year. And I think we could have a goal of having 1,500 items in the garage as a, you know, a sitting quantity of stock throughout the year and try and generate $150,000 in revenue by just buying really good quality, high-valued items still with great profit. I think you could do it. I don't think you need four, five, six, seven thousand items in store to generate 150,000 in revenue. So that might be a bit of a bit of a goal for us next year. Let me know in the comments if you think that's achievable or not. Um, been a bit of a rant for this last you know 20 odd minutes I reckon. Going through the what sold and a bit of a cleanse cull update but I don't know, I think it's all useful information for you guys to know exactly what I'm getting up to. It's just me down here today, so I wanted to talk uh, to you guys because it's a little lonely without Courtney around on a Friday. But um, there was a really great video that we did at the flea market a couple of weeks ago where, we, you know, this quality sort of items that we're trying to source, um, you know, this is a really good representation of that at the flea. And I'm going out there in two days' time. That's going to be the next video on the channel. Um, so we're going to try and do the same as what we, tra uh, what we actually found here. Um, so go and tune into that video and yeah, appreciate you being here for this one.